forest, somewhere in Central Europe. Here, there lives a shy individualist. Many have already heard of it, but only the few come face to face with it. It's very rare to see it in the open countryside. This very proficient hunter has adapted itself excellently to its habitat. The Northern Goshawk, for many the embodiment of the term bird of prey. Probably no other bird in Europe is disliked, ruthlessly hunted and killed as they. But what is the Goshawk's actual role in the bigger picture within nature? What makes birds of prey such unique and fascinating hunters of the skies? Birds of prey symbolize strength, speed, and beauty. They attract more superlatives than any other animal species. They are not only successful executions of the most phenomenal flight maneuvers, but also command one of the most ingenious hunting techniques and are in possession of the best sensory abilities. Throughout evolution, they have adapted to varied habitats and to their choice of prey. Their choice of breeding ground is as varied as their diet is. Birds of prey are the masters of the skies. They have conquered every habitat on earth, from the hot dry south over cool and damp river valleys. From the coast of Norway upwards until the bleak landscape of the world of mountain peaks. Some birds of prey can even hunt in dense forests. But those who fly here have to be fully in control of their aviation skills, exactly like the Goshawk. It uses the forest for cover. It also uses it to attain its position for a successful surprise attack and can reach tremendous speeds during such attacks. But how can it, despite such a velocity, effortlessly avoid all obstacles or simply not fly into the next tree? One possibility is the shape of its wings. They've got a relatively small width span of only around one meter, ideal for tight spaces. The long tail acts not only as a rudder, but also as a brake. With such a tail, it can change its direction at lightning fast speed while hunting and also maneuver itself between densely set trees and in thick undergrowth. Through the tighter areas, it flaps up its wings with its feet out at front. It can, for a short moment, hold the wings directly above its back. It's only the tail that sustains it in the air. If it's negotiated the opening, its tail can fan out and act as a form of third wing, supporting the bird. Supremely fast and unbelievably agile and skillful as well. That is the secret of the success of the Goshawk's flight. The Goshawk's entire body is geared up for hunting. Aside from its astonishing aeronautical skills, it has long dagger-like claws with which it not only grabs its prey with, but also kills it. When clenching their prey, the claws dig in from behind and penetrate deep into the body. The victim dies often most quickly from internal injuries. And the goshawk also possesses extremely efficient eyesight. It is thanks to that that it can concentrate on its prey and still instantaneously avoid obstacles. A flight through the forest, from our point of view. And this is roughly how it looks from the Gospel's point of view. While we see with only one fovea per eye, birds of prey have two. 
Here is an impression of the vision with one pair. It can chart its surroundings with a view forwards at the same time. That is how a goshawk can exercise such exact precision and avoid obstacles. Now the same flight again with the second pair, which is more orientated forwards and serves things in close up. With this pair, even in the densest forest, the goshawk always has its prey in view. With this extra capability, the field of view is substantially enlarged. With the one pair of fovea, the goshawk can survey its environment. And with the second pair, it can look ahead at the same time. The fact that both cones of view overlap affords the raptor a spatial view that is still effective in very low lighting condition. Birds of prey are gifted with the most efficient eyesight that evolution has ever created. Added to that, it has yet another exceptional quality. The resolution of the retina. What goshawks can see is three to four times sharper than that of humans. Finally, there is one last remarkable characteristic. It is like having an inbuilt pair of binoculars. It can recognize smaller objects from a greater distance, around six to eight times stronger than the human eye. Thanks to this extraordinary visual ability, there is nothing that escapes its attention. A flock of pigeons, from our perspective. The goshawk not only sees everything more clearly and much closer up, but also has an entirely different perception of movement. In comparison to humans, birds of prey have a greatly increased temporal resolution capacity. Humans need only 18 pictures per second to recognize the appearance of film-like movement. The goshawk can perceive up to 160 per second as individual pictures. However, even the best sensory abilities are no guarantee for a successful hunt. Within a flock, it's difficult for the goshawk to zoom in on one target. Its chances are only increased when it can separate one of the slower pigeons from the flock. Mostly that would be ones that are ill, weak or injured. The situation is totally different when it's one animal in sight. The goshawk is the master of stalk and surprise hunting. It waits patiently for the right moment and then in an instant begins its attack. The goshawk will strike anything that it can overpower. Its spectrum of prey can range from a mouse to a rabbit, from smaller birds to a goose. Stronger goshawks can overpower animals weighing up to three and a half kilos. The hooded crow seems to be in luck, but the goshawk simply changes its course and begins the attack again. Now the same scene again as we would see it. The entire hunt is over in a fraction of seconds. The goshawk resides in nearly all countries across Europe. It can live in all types of forests. It can also live in cities and villages. You can even find it active in parks and cemeteries. What is important is that its environment offers enough prey and enough cover for its specialized form of hunting. For this reason, its preference is for diversified forests that aren't so densely populated and offer easy access to open countryside, fields, meadows and moors. Here at the sparsely populated edge of a forest is where the largest selection of prey is on offer. In contrast to many other birds of prey, the goshawk's breeding grounds are mostly found deep inside the forest. What's important is that it has a corridor of approach to the nest. The nests are most commonly found in large old trees at a height of 20 to 25 meters above ground. The male bird is responsible for provisions. The female feeds the catch bit by bit to the hungry nest of chicks. When the chicks don't need constant care and are more self-sufficient in taking the prey apart themselves, 
the female will also go out on the hunt. The common buzzard often sits nearly stock still for hours on a perch in wait of its prey. For the bird, it is an economical form of hunting. One can see it in all seasons, along roads and paths, even along roads busy with traffic. The buzzard counts as the smaller version of the eagle. However, it has a wide wingspan and is considered a master of gliding and sailing. Like the goshawk, the buzzard is ruthlessly pursued. Some believe that it is to blame for the decrease in small game, but for larger prey this buzzard is too weak. Anything above the size of a wild rabbit is too big for it. The common buzzard is the most common bird of prey in Europe, thanks in part to the rich variety of food that humans inadvertently impart. It mainly feeds on voles. Whereas the goshawk prefers the close confines and the cover of a forest, the common buzzard prefers open countryside, meadows and fields. The numbers of new buzzards changes significantly from year to year. In years where there are plenty of mice, many more common buzzards survive as in years of reduced supply. Therefore, it is the food on offer that regulates the number of buzzards and not the buzzards that are responsible for the numbers of its prey. For these young buzzards, the lack of supply this year has marked consequences. Because there is not enough to eat, their hunger causes them to attack a sibling, pecking away until they're dead. It is both horrific and shrewd. It is only then that their chances of survival are increased. The Northern Sparrow Hawk is the smaller, more streamlined version of the Goshawk. It uses a different strategy to ensure a more successful breeding. They attempt to counter the loss by producing a larger litter. However, with five to seven chicks, the nests have little space. That one of the chicks should fall out of the nest is a common occurrence. The chick has managed to survive the long drop. However, a chick that has lost the protection of the nest is in big trouble. The parents will not worry about a chick that has fallen out. Alone and helpless, it has no chances of survival on the forest floor. its siblings and the mother who is busy trying to keep her chicks sated. The destiny of a lone chick is immaterial. Even in the case of the goshawk, not all of the young survive. Natural enemies and disease decimate the brood. Only every other fledgling survives the first year. If all goes as it should, goshawks can live up to the ripe old age of 20. The female goshawk returns to the nest throughout the day with fresh supplies. All what the mother catches to eat is fed to the young as well. They don't receive any special nutrition. Even when the chick's appetite has been served, the female still has no peace. She has to protect the young, not least from the rain, but also the sun's unprotected rays. These young goshawks maintain a peaceful existence with one another. Life-threatening scenarios of competition in the food chain or even the assassination of other siblings, so-called siblicide, is not a factor with them. The three chicks of around the same age don't begrudge the portion for the decidedly smaller latecomer. The to and froing with their share of the catch is more a play than a fight. Among each other, there's not much to differentiate the raptor offspring, regardless which of the species they belong to. Something yet to be explained is why the offspring have mostly a white down. It's certainly not a camouflage. Forested lakes or floodplains. 
Here you'll find the favoured breeding site of the Western Osprey, also known as the Fishhawk. In matters of where they breed, they're adaptable. As such, they've increasingly built their nests on top of high voltage piles. Due to a shortage of nesting sites in the overcultivated forests, and quite simply, one has the best panoramic view from them. The osprey is the success story of a true specialist. Although it can be found all over the world, it can only be found close to its food source. Fish, and plenty of them. The building of such a large nest is an extremely arduous affair. Every twig and every branch has to be brought up, one at a time. But it seems that when it comes to security, that extra bit of effort all seems to be worthwhile. Osprey pairs usually breed once a year. Artificial nests are gladly occupied. The proximity to the power line seems of little concern, and mating at such a heady height is a balancing act of the highest order. The young goshawks, in the meantime, are now around three weeks old. A pair of goshawks will normally have more than one residence that they'll change on an annual basis. It has the great advantage that after the nest has stood empty for a year, it will be rid of parasites. Old nests are often used over decades and often reach a diameter of up to one and a half meters. Even the young goshawks learn to keep their nursery tidy from an early age. As soon as they can walk, they hop to the edge of the nest and make sure their droppings fly a long way from the nest. Their cleanliness is purely instinctive. Exactly in the same way that they regularly do a bit of training for their flight muscles. This is the hunting territory of another kind of eagle, the short-toed snake eagle. As its name suggests, its diet is made up primarily of snakes. Whether poisonous or not, is of little concern. Once it has seen the snake, there's no escape. As opposed to most other birds of prey, the short-toed eagle's claws, as the name suggests, are relatively short. They're more suited to keeping the reptiles still. The short-toed eagle is not immune to the snake's venom, but it does know how to safely render them powerless. The nest of the short-toed eagle can lay up to 10 kilometers away from its hunting grounds. Successful breeding relies on sufficient numbers of reptiles nearby. They only produce one offspring, but while rearing it, the whole family needs at least three to five medium-sized snakes. And that's per day. The little one will have to glug back around two to three hundred of those before it's fully fledged. But to begin with, a smaller version. And if it should be that the mother has overestimated a little, she's always on hand to give a little help gulping it back. Just a little tug there. And there you go. The short-toed snake eagle was once widespread across Central Europe. Today, they only live in the south and east of Europe. But meanwhile, it is nowhere often. Expansive plains scattered with islands of trees. Sometimes a lone mountain range as well. This is the home of the Eastern Imperial Eagle. It breeds from Central Eastern Europe to the south of Russia. Similar to the goshawk, it has two very distinct hunting techniques. Either it will circle in the sky before plunging down on its prey, or it will sit very still up high and lurk until the right moment. 
The Imperial Eagle is no swashbuckler when it comes to hunting. Although it's the third largest eagle in Europe, it prefers to hunt for smaller prey. Ground squirrels, or perhaps a hamster now and again. These ground squirrels are quite oblivious to the danger they're in. But the roof of this deserted house offers this young eagle a commanding view of the surrounding terrain. Nothing escapes its attention from its vantage point. Patiently, it waits for the right opportunity. An Imperial Eagle can weigh up to four kilos. As such, every hunting attack is a major effort. With a powerful beating of its wings, the Eagle accelerates into its descent. Ground squirrels are suddenly aware of the impending danger. The surprise attack has come to nothing. The young eagle will have to put in a bit of practice. For now, the little rodents are a bit too nimble for him. The bird of prey is only successful if the other is careless. And on the ground, the lumbering eagle is of no danger. Even the ground squirrels know that. For the young eagle, it'll just have to retreat. But it will be back. The hunters and the hunted remain at a well-balanced equilibrium. The predator and those preyed upon have always had an effect on each other. When the one has improved its hunting expertise, the other will follow suit and develop new strategies to cleverly avoid the attacks. Inasmuch, it is practically impossible for a bird of prey to eradicate their prey. In comparison to the talents of this bird of prey, the other eagles of Europe are moderate hunters. The golden eagle is not only the strongest and most versatile of its closest relations, but also the most audacious hunter. It'll even trust itself with animals that are prepared to fight back. And so it is with the young fox which sits so defenseless. Normally, the eagle would have no problem whatsoever with such a target. Foiled. And when on the ground, the golden eagle is at a distinct disadvantage. The young, inexperienced fox makes a fatal mistake. It walks probably out of curiosity towards the eagle. The eagle immediately takes its advantage and plunges down with its claws onto the fox's head. With such a vice-like grip of its long claws, the golden eagle can penetrate the skull of its victim mostly by the first clinch and thus, in seconds, kill it. The Alps are the kingdom of the Golden Eagle. They are also spread out across other parts of Europe, but ever scarcer. Often they will fly for hours surveying the ground for suitable prey or looking for dead game. The Golden Eagle mostly sails or glides over the steep slopes. 
The wider the wingspan, the lighter the body of the bird, all the better for carrying heavy weights. In the case of the golden eagle, it is built in perfect proportion. Its wingspan can reach up to two meters. They're wide and long and perfectly suited to hoist and carry the eagle over wind currents. It's also thanks to these formidable wings that the eagle is able to transport prey which at times are heavier than itself. From a mouse to a chamois, few of the mountain creatures are safe for it. Often its attacks are at lightning speed, the element of surprise being the secret to its success. The golden eagle has caught out many an alpine marmot by such a tactic. But even the alpine marmots have their defense strategy. While the others play and frolic around, one always stands on guard. Those who remain alert, remain alive longer. While hunting, the golden eagle can reach speeds of up to 160, even 190 kilometers per hour. A short cry, that means an eagle is approaching. All back to their burrow immediately. one of the younger ones hasn't heard the signal. In the last moment, it manages to escape. Whereas the golden eagle hunts its prey primarily by circling the skies, the goshawk uses alongside the surveillance flights another hunting technique. It sits and waits until something edible flies or hops in front of its beak. Nevertheless, even the goshawk needs an element of surprise for a successful kill, for it is neither the fastest nor the strongest native bird of prey. It can, however, accelerate very quickly to its maximum speed, despite not being able to maintain it for long. If it doesn't manage to overpower its prey within the first couple of hundred meters, it'll probably give it up for lost. Less than 10% of its forays result in success. like grip of the goshawk brings the hunt to an end. In a pristine car with wet meadows lives the smallest eagle in Germany, the lesser spotted eagle. For a bird of prey, it has an unusual method of hunting. It looks for its prey on foot. The lesser spotted eagle can also hunt from the sky, but less so than other birds of prey. On forest meadows and on the edge of the river banks, it moves around like a stalk and covers great distances on its long legs. Just such a grass snake would be wonderful. But it doesn't feel so safe with this fully grown specimen. There's certainly some easier prey somewhere else. As unusual as its hunting method is, the only superlative that could be attributed to it is sadly that it's the most endangered eagle in Central Europe. The lesser spotted eagle has very high standards for its environment, but today in many areas is not adequate. As such, the number of lesser spotted eagles breeding in Europe is decreasing year after year. 
At present, there are only about 100 couples remaining in Germany. More intense deforestation, fewer forest glades, and more drainage. With every human intervention, the habitat of the eagle diminishes. The last indigenous pairs breeding in Germany live today in cultural landscapes that are not the subject of intense farming. And if life wasn't difficult enough for the lesser spotted eagle, this marsh harrier wants his share as well. The harrier constantly harasses the eagle. Finally, the lesser spotted eagle has had enough of the troublemaker. Will it result in a fight? If so, the harrier's chances are not looking good. The eagle is nearly twice as heavy as the harrier, but therefore the harrier is a little more sassy. that it just wants a bit of peace and heads off into the wilderness. And the harrier finally gets its prey. In a landscape where there are small clusters of trees and the meadows are bordered by deciduous forests, there is another bird often in search of nourishment which has the most unusual hunting method of all the other birds of prey. The European honey buzzard. This large bird feeds itself, amazingly enough, mostly on insects. The larvae and pupae of wasps and bumblebees make up the largest part of its diet. To get to them, it digs them out. troubled by the stings of the wild wasps or bees because it possesses horny platelets that protect its feet and its face is protected by a firmly concentrated layer of feathers. Even the anatomy of the honey buzzard has over the course of time adapted itself to its particular hunting method. Whereas most other birds of prey possess long claws, the claws of the honey buzzard are very short with a gentle curve. Not only does that make life on the ground that much easier, but more importantly, they are ideal for digging. The hunting grounds of the goshawk are the borders of the forest. From its perch within the cover of the trees, it surveys the surrounding countryside and waits for potential prey. It can without problem also hunt in dense forests, However, hunting in open country has some distinct advantages. Firstly, the visibility here is paramount, and there are no obstacles to impede the hunt. And secondly, the victim has no easily available place to hide, leaving them more or less defenseless for the entire flight route. Goshawks, buzzards, and eagles kill their prey with their claws on their feet. The goshawk only uses its beak to pluck and then tear out the lean meat from the body when the prey is already dead. They'll avoid all the parts that are not so easily digestible. Every catch brought back to the nest has already been meticulously plucked. For the young goshawks, there is little distraction in the nest. 
As they get older, they'll train their flight muscles more frequently and more intensively. Later, it will be imperative for their survival. However, most of their time is spent sleeping, waiting, and sitting around idly. When the young goshawks are bigger and stronger, the delivery of supplies starts to become increasingly unruly. Sometimes many hours will have passed between feeding times, which means that the offspring are very hungry, and it's every man for himself. Here is where the claws come into action and where the feathers begin to fly. The adult birds sometimes only stay for seconds, throwing the prey into the nest before taking straight off again. The female only returns to the nest for feeding when the offspring are around three weeks old. However, even when the young ones are alone in the nest, the parent always has an eye out. The danger that an enemy will take advantage is too great. Anything that comes too close to the nest will be attacked. The adult goshawk is quite prepared to take on opponents far bigger than themselves. This eventually becomes apparent even to this golden eagle, but it's a dangerous game. The golden eagle could in one vice-like grip kill the goshawk. But the goshawk has the advantage. It is much more agile and faster. Again and again it swoops down on the larger eagle. It only ceases its attack when the eagle withdraws and the danger for the offspring has been averted. It is the biggest and heaviest eagle in Central and Northern Europe, the white-tailed eagle. This emblematic bird's wingspan can reach up to 2 meters 40, and it can weigh up to 7 kilos. Their population across Europe also dramatically declined until the middle of the 20th century. Thanks to extensive protective measures, the situation has now significantly improved. Today, there are more sea eagles breeding in Central Europe than for the last 100 years. Nearly half of the breeding pairs live on the coast of Norway, and thus in an environment of extreme climatic conditions. However, here the bird can find a secure spot to build its nest in the calm forests along the vastness of the Atlantic and the extensive open countryside. Those who want to survive here must be prepared to adapt. The sea eagle in this respect is truly adept. It'll hunt whatever is indigenous to the surrounding environment. Here it will hunt primarily for fish. These it'll hunt over flat and calm waters, where it can better pinpoint Although a breathtaking backdrop, high up in the north and on the rugged coastline of the Atlantic, it doesn't always remain so romantic. Above all, when the fog rolls in from the sea to the land, it's not unusual that such conditions will be followed by entire days of bad weather. At such times, the nursery of the sea eagle becomes pretty uncomfortable. The powerful flapping of the wings not only invigorates the muscles, but helps to keep warm. There are not many birds of prey in Europe that have to endure such extreme changeable weather. A stable nest, however, offers an excellent protection. 
were it not for the bothersome screeching seagulls. Above all, when the adult bird brings its catch back to their nest. Considering the pesky troublemakers, the female doesn't remain long at the nest. She throws the food in and quickly takes off again. The young eagles will have to deal with the grumblings of the neighbours on their own. A nest in a tree, directly on the coast of Norway, is an exception. Most of the breeding grounds of a sea eagle can be found here, directly on the ground or on cliffs. The sea eagles are very adaptable in matters concerning their diet. Mostly they'll hunt fish and waterfowl. Mammals make up only a small part of their diet and are mostly carrier. Which species will be hunted depends on what is on offer locally and what each season offers up. For now, during the rearing of the offspring, fish will play the major part of their diet. The young have already learned that their large beaks will only serve them well if regularly cleaned. After 80 to 90 days, the young are fully fledged and take leave of the nest. The offspring will remain under the care of their parents for some time before eventually flying off to find their own territory. Whereas the adult birds usually remain close to the breeding ground for the entire year, the young roam far and wide and eventually leave. Until that point, however, they are killing time. Everything interesting will be investigated. Perhaps it's something to eat, or at least something to be played with. Back to the forest of the Gosok. Much has happened in the nest. The young ones will certainly soon leave the nest. In contrast to the adult birds, the young Gosoks have another colouring. They've got a red tint to their underbelly with black spots. Before they'll leave the nest, they'll have to do some intensive flight muscle training. It will be vital for their future. Despite such concerns, the young goshawks are easily distracted from learning and training. Now, at an age of between 40 to 45 days, they'll make their first attempts to branches close by. They will spend most of their time sitting on other branches close to the nest. They can't as yet fly properly and therefore will remain for a further four weeks and continue being cared for by the parents. The young ones always stay close enough to the nest so that they can get back quickly again. For now, one or two of them are still a bit shaky on their legs. Over the course of time, the distances will increase until neighbouring trees can be reached with a hop and a flutter. Their flight muscles during this period are constantly being trained so that their early leaps develop into short flights. Over the course of the summer, the young goshawks will finally leave their parents to rain. From then on, they'll have to deal with everything alone. The young kestrel, on the other hand, is comparatively spoiled by its parents and receives its food already prepared into bite-sized pieces. Their home, however, is not an island and in this forest they are not alone. When the adults leave to hunt, it's dangerous, and the offspring have to fend for themselves. However, what returns is certainly no kestrel, but instead a young, very hungry gossip. The young in an unguarded nest are easy pickings.
Birds of prey have no inhibitions to kill their fellow species. What can be overpowered will be better. The goshawk is more than capable of taking the offspring of other goshawks from a foreign nest and then feeding them to its own. It is only their own offspring that will be spared. The kestrel has noticed the attack. Birds of prey only perceive movement. For those who play dead, there is a chance. But in this case, the young goshawk kills one after another. The adult kestrels have to watch helplessly. Their rescue came not only too late, but they are also powerless because the young hawk is totally unperturbed. No one is going to separate it from such rich pickings. At the end of it all, only one young kestrel has survived. Extremely few birds of prey are killed by their fellow species. For most, humankind is responsible. One problem is the increased number of wind turbines. Birds of prey are especially affected because they collide with the rotor blades. The lesser spotted eagle, in contrast, keeps its distance from wind turbines because of the disturbance caused by the noise when in operation. To limit the danger to birds of prey in the future, wind turbines have to be built at a certain minimum distance from nests. Above all, commercial forests no longer offer a habitat for a bird of prey like the goshawk. Monocultures are neither a habitat for the hunter nor the hunted. What's here for a bird of prey to hunt? Which prey is meant to still live here? Birds of prey are rigorously protected, but they continue to be illegally poached or like here poisoned. The cramped feet surmise the agony of this gospel. Added to that, birds of prey are shot as they were before, as shown by this whole riddled breastbone of a goshawk. It is this species' blood in particular that some hard-nosed humans are still after. Hunters see the goshawk as competition for their hunting of hares, partridges and pheasants. For pigeon breeders, it's enemy number one. But how can a goshawk distinguish between wild and carrier pigeons. It's often forgotten that birds of prey more often hunt ill, weak or injured animals, inasmuch they maintain a healthy balance of the population. For the goshawk, as for the buzzard and the eagle, hunting is not a hobby. They hunt to survive. They don't kill out of boredom or out of a desire to kill, they kill because they're hungry. Birds of prey lived on the earth before there was any trace of humankind. In this infinite period of time, they haven't eradicated any of their choice of prey, in sharp contrast to humans. Birds of prey are fascinating animals. They are equipped with extraordinary abilities. Thereafter, it is up to us to secure the survival of the hunters of the sky.